Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where this week I am back to work on the ON18 Bandit Canyon Railway. This is my two by three foot mini layout with a Wild West outlaw theme. And just a quick refresher for those who may not remember, ON18 is the scale gauge combination where 148 O scale trains run on narrow gauge 18 inch track. And in O scale, 18 inches is right around 9 millimeters. So you can use N scale track if you like, or HON30 track, which is, which is what I like to use, and N scale uh, mechanisms, chassis, and components, and things like that to make the trains run. This week, I've been working on the scene around Hole in the Wall, repairing and finishing the track, then painting it and adding some ballast to the rails and some ground cover and other details. So let's rewind back to the beginning of the week so you can see how the whole project started. So the first thing I need to do before I can move forward on this, here let me get the depot out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. I, uh, I want to swap out this turnout. Um, it's, it's been causing some problems. There's a couple of issues with it. One is it's extremely sharp. It's like a number two or something like that. And uh, so that's causing some issues. The other issue is that uh, it's a smaller sized rail. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the mainline rail, this is some Pico uh, HON30 or HOE um, Code 80 track, which I like to use for ON18. But I had this turn out and thought I could get away with using it. It's actually, I think it's, it's Code 70 or smaller. I think it's actually smaller than Code 70. Long story short, I'm going to swap it out for this uh, Pico Code 80 HON30 turnout. The geometry is going to be a little bit different, but I think, I think we can make it work. Now the track is not glued down. I like to use these uh, O-scale rail spikes from Microengineering. These are the small spikes. And I just drill little holes and put them in right where the cast-in spike detail is. This is a Caboose Industries N-Scale ground throw. And I connect that with a little bit of uh, music wire linkage. Bring in my rail nippers. Cut this right here. There you can see how sharp that, that turnout is now. I want to align this new turnout in about the same spot and have the, uh, the switch stand in the same place. I just need to trim these extended ties off a little bit. I'm going to need to trim this track coming in. These are some uh, N-scale Code 80 rail joiners. Now you could just try and take this piece of flex track and bend it around like this. You get this S curve in it, but I know from experience that that will create a really weak joint right there. Instead, what I want to use is a curved piece of track coming out from the turnout. This piece of track was made from an N scale, 11 inch radius, code 80, you know, standard piece of Atlas track. All I did was remove the N scale ties and then slide these machined rails. They're already machined to this curve, so I don't have to bend it. They're going to hold that shape. I slid those rails into these uh, ON18 or HON30 ties. So, using some uh, 6040 rosin core lead solder and my uh, butane torch to solder this. I like the butane torch because it, you know, delivers fast heat directly where I want it. This should be good to go, yeah. I want to heat the rails and the joint, and then just touch it with the solder. Turn around to the other side. That should do it. Now back over here, we can attempt to join all this up. Hope we got that right. I just want to 
spike this into the rail down over here to keep everything in alignment. And since I'm going down into plywood, makes things a lot easier if you start those holes, pre-drill them. Now I've got another problem in that my spur track coming off here in front of the depot doesn't line up very well anymore because of the change in the turnout geometry. But I think I can make it work. Spike this in down. Now it's not going to be coming off the end at the same angle, but that doesn't matter because that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's, a track to, it's a track to nowhere, so I'm not going to worry about it. Just want to make sure this transition is as smooth as I can make it. That's the most important thing. And then I can realign the depot and the roadbed. So I just need to remove this little extra piece of roadbed right here. And then I can scooch the depot closer. I might not even need to move that light. Now I should be able to nest this right in here. Now that I have all the components installed and aligned, I need to gap this rail right here. And let me show you why. Say this track is positive, this rail is positive, right? And then this side is negative, okay? So same here, positive and can you see that and negative on this side positive negative when this switch is thrown this is a live frog here live frog turnout it's not gapped so what's going to happen is you're going to have negative current here and positive here causing a short circuit unless we gap this rail and then when the switch is thrown we'll have uh, you won't have that conflict I want my gap to be right about here, I think. And to cut it, I'm going to use a uh, cutoff wheel in my rotary tool. Now, with these Pico turnouts, you don't need the ground throw for it to be functional. There's a spring in here. And it gives nice uh, contact back and forth, just like that. But I like to have the ground throw because I don't like to have to touch the track in order to throw the switch. And the secret to this is you have to make sure that the points are centered between the two stock rails. And to achieve that, stick a couple of pieces of cardboard down in there, one on each side, to keep those... Uh, those points centered. Now I've got my piece of music wire. Thread that down through the hole. And then through the hole here on the ground throw. So I've got the points centered. And I also want to make sure that the lever is pointing straight up and down, not on one side or the other before I spike this into place. I'll use a couple of track nails to hold this in place. And I can push that in there with uh, the point of my needle nose pliers. Now if I pull cardboard out, I should probably also mention that this live frog turnout is what's also known as a power routing turnout. So when the points are thrown for the siding here, this acts as an electrical switch. The points actually route electricity 
through the rails to this siding right here. And as long as I don't have power coming in from this direction, I don't need to gap these rails. As long as this just say, stays a dead end siding, I don't have to worry about that because there's not going to be a short here uh, at the frog. But I do need to worry about this rail right here in this gap that I just cut. Even though it's preventing a short right now, this nickel-silver rail can expand and contract with changes in the temperature. So I need to fill that gap with something so it won't close up again. And what I've got is some five-minute epoxy and a little scrap of styrene. So I'm going to mix up some of this epoxy, equal parts of the uh, clear and the hardener, dollop of each. Mix those up thoroughly. And I've got a little piece of styrene right here, but you could use any you know, non-conductive plastic for this, acrylic or whatever. But you want it to be easy to trim because once this epoxy hardens, you come back and uh, trim all around that uh, so the trains can pass without, uh, without hitting it. Now I want to cut a little short section of end scale road, cork road bed to uh, fit underneath where I had to realign this track right here. I'll put a little yellow glue on the bottom. Should be able to just slide this right under here into position. Now once we get the ground cover and ballast on everything here, you won't even be able to tell that this has been realigned. And it'll be our little secret. I think this epoxy has hardened enough now that I can trim this and file it down to shape. There we go. One filled gap. And when this is painted, you won't be able to see it at all. And while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and slide one of these ties that I cut, cut off underneath this rail joint. I don't need to glue that down because when I ballast it, that's, that'll be plenty of glue to hold that in place. I'll just give the rails a quick cleaning. We can try this out. I'll test everything out. It's old lucky number seven here, I think. That's good. Get the switch for the siding. We'll put it in reverse. Try it back in there. Beautiful. Nice. Then, let the switch flip the other way. We'll give it some throttle. Nothing happens. So that power routing turnout is doing its thing. That track is dead. Nice. Okay. Well, now that I have everything running as well as it can, it's time to paint the track. Of course, painting the track will make it so things no longer run, at least temporarily, but it's a necessary step. I'm going to be uh, spraying the track with some Rust-Oleum dark brown camo. That's the first step in the painting process. And ordinarily, you want to do something like this before you have scenery and structures in place, but, you know, I didn't do it that way, so <laughs> we're going to make do. I put up some uh, temporary masks here out of Bristol board to protect this rock work, removed all the structures, so I think, uh, I think we'll be able to get away with it. Another thing I want to do is uh, protect the turnout points with some masking tape. Just put a little bit right there, just like that. Okay, let that dry for a few minutes, then we can move on to the next step. Once the paint on the track is no longer shiny, but not quite dry yet, I'm going to take my, uh, my track cleaning tool, which is just a cork with some old cotton wrapped around it from an old t-shirt, and take some of this 
odorless mineral spirits. Same thing I used to clean the track with all the time. And just go over the tops of the rails to remove the paint. But just from the tops. You don't want to press down too hard and get on the sides or anything. And you'll probably have to go back over it two or three times. Better to do it lightly two or three times than, you know, try to scrub it off all at once. Now I want to switch to acrylic paint and I'm going to dry brush it on to bring out the, uh, the cast in detail in these ties. And I think some um, country gray and territorial beige are probably good choices for that. And I've got a semi-stiff brush. I like to take a piece of corrugated cardboard and get most of the paint off and dip it in and then rub it off just like that. And then just dry brush it on. What I like to do is, you know, have some areas be a little more brown, some a little more tan, a little bit more gray in the mixture just for variety. The gray will make the, uh, the ties look very old and worn. See how that brings out the spike detail too. I like to hit the ground throw with a little weathering too. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So next comes the ground cover and the ballast, which in this case is just gonna be some red dirt. Now I'm gonna want the ground cover, the dirt, to come right up to the edges of these structures, but I don't wanna glue them down. I don't wanna glue them in place. I want them to remain removable. So how do we do that? Because we're gonna be pouring diluted white glue all over the place in a minute. Well, let me show you what I came up with here. I'm gonna put some masking tape down where the uh, footprint of these structures will meet the ground cover. Now, put the structure back in place, key it in where it goes, and use my hobby knife to cut away the excess tape. So we've essentially just created a mask here. So when I put all the ground cover in and glue it down, it won't glue onto this. Well, it will glue onto the top of the tape, but then we pull the tape off and we have a nice blank spot for the structure to sit on. And I'll do the same thing over here for Etta's place. Now I can start sprinkling on the red dirt. And that's all this is. This is red dirt I collected over near Sedona, Arizona. And this is gonna be both our ballast and our ground cover. And the area I'm working on is basically from over here under Robber's Roost all the way down around to that uh, turnout we just put in. Now once I have a good sprinkling of red dirt on there, and go back with a soft paintbrush and work it down in between the ties. Make sure there's none sticking up uh, where it's going to interfere with the uh, passing of the trains. It was very common on light narrow gauge lines out here in the west to just use dirt as ballast whenever it was handy on site. So this is actually somewhat prototypical. <laughs> I really want to take special care around the all the moving parts of this turnout. So I'm, get, I'm using a smaller brush, making sure there's nothing up between the stock rail and the points of the turnout. And also cleaning out anything that might be in the frog up here. That will interfere with the passing trains. Okay, I think I have the track pretty well squared away. Notice I didn't do anything here or here, and that's because this is a road that's actually going through here. It's going to switch back down into the canyon, and I want that to be a lighter shade. So I'm using a lighter shade of tan dirt. Along this cliff edge, got some larger little pebbles and rocks. 
to act as like a talus that has fallen down on the sides of the cliff. Kind of ease the transition between the, uh, the foam rock work and the real dirt. Now that I've got all that just where I want it, I'm going to wet everything down with some wet water. And wet water, again, is just regular water with a couple of drops of liquid detergent in it, like dish soap. And that breaks up the surface tension so that when you put the glue on, it spreads out and doesn't pool up. And this is white glue, which has been diluted three to one with water. Then I just dribble it on. And because that's already wet, that's just going to spread out in there. Right down the middle of the track, except I'm kind of avoiding where the points are. Once again, I'm gonna make sure I don't glue those down, glue them in place or anything. And yeah, it's going to drip off the edges and make a mess, but that's all part of the fun. And this is the part, you know, where it looks really ugly before it looks really great. <laughs> There's a step like that in every project. Now, while this is good and wet, I'm going to take an O-scale horse. Actually, that's a mule. And uh, just do this. Add some hoof tracks in the road. Really good idea to come and work that turnout back and forth. Make sure it's not getting glued into place. Okay, I've let all of that dry overnight, and now it's time to go back and see how we did. Well, the first thing I want to do is clean all of this track again, the same way I did last time. A little um, mineral spirits on a clean cloth to get that any paint, glue, dirt off of the tops of the rails. Those things aren't very good for electrical conductivity, so we want to get them off of there. Then I want to spend some time tuning up this turnout. Even though I was, I was pretty careful not to get a lot of dirt and glue down here under the points. Some still uh, manages to sneak in there, so you want to get that out. The goal here is to get this turnout operating you know, as well as it did before I added all of this stuff. Now I'll test this again with the locomotive to make sure everything's working like it should. Awesome. Now I can peel this masking tape off and I can put the structures back into place next. Now I want to build a little bit of a grade crossing right here where the outlaw trail winds through town. And I think I'll use some O scale 1x12s for that. I'm going to distress these boards first, enhance the wood grain with a fine tooth razor saw, and now I'm going to stain them a silvery gray with my uh, shoe dye and rubbing alcohol mixture. This is one of my favorite wood stains. use it all the time, so I always have some made up and ready to go. The way I make it is I buy one of these little bottles of shoe dye, dump all of it out, and then fill the bottle up with 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. So the residue inside the bottle mixes with the alcohol and makes a nice diluted silvery stain. Of course, you know, if you want it darker, you can add a little bit more shoe dye, you want it lighter, you can add a little bit more alcohol. Now let those dry for a minute. And I want this crossing to look kind of rough hewn, you know, like everything over here 
and hole in the wall. So I've cut these uh, planks, now that the stain is dry, I've cut them to about a scale six foot length. And I'm just building it in place with some Eileen's tacky glue. And I just want to be sure that um, none of this wood is rising up above the rail head. So it won't interfere with the equipment. I'm just going to use one board in between the tracks. And you can see how I carved a little bit of a curve into it. Just want to get it down here between the rails and inside the spike heads to ensure it doesn't interfere with the uh, passing equipment. Now blend that in a little bit more dirt. Now I can finish all of this off with some weeds and cactuses and other little details. I think you definitely want to have some weeds growing around the depot platform. This is some uh, buffalo grass, late summer buffalo grass from uh, Scenic Express. Could be some over by this grade crossing too. You know, any place that water might uh, gather. Might even have some flowers here, some wildflowers in front of the porch at Edda's place. These are from Scenic Express also. I'll use some dark green ground foam to indicate some larger bushes. Just poke a hole down through this piece of foam. And I've got a nice looking cactus here that I was able to salvage on the uh, hanging rock section of the Thunder Mesa layout. Same with this prickly pear cactus. Also came from hanging rock. Originally came from uh, Pegasus scale models. They make a lot of really nice HO and O scale cacti, among other great things. These yuccas are from uh, JTT scenery products. They make some nice stuff too. Here's another little detail I like, salvaged from Hanging Rock. It's a barrel casting that I sliced. So it looks like it's half buried in the sand. I like that because it tells a little story. And now I think just a few larger rocks that might have fallen from the cliffs up above. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. start on finishing hole in the wall can't wait to do some more and that's going to be a wrap on this little project i want to thank you all so much for watching today and you know if it's your first time here please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more from thunder mesa studio you can also follow us over on instagram at thunder.mesa and see what's new on the thunder mesa studio website and if you really enjoy what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can do what these fine folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash Thunder Mesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.